Yeah, thank you so much for inviting me today. Um, delighted to be part of this um, SCAD conference. Yeah, my name's Nikki. I'm a specialist nurse in cardiac rehabilitation, and I've been in this area for 11 years. Um, still love it. So yes, always happy to improve what we do, really. So I just need to talk a little bit, um, generally, why cardiac rehab is still here, really, a little bit about the evidence. So. It's a professionally supervised sort of menu-based programme um, which lots of components put it together for people that have had a cardiac condition event and treatment to make sure they get back to their everyday sort of usual activities. That's our aim, really. So we know that by doing that, we can help reduce the chance of any sort of further cardiac events. This is sort of a research-based. And any sort of unplanned sort of admissions with um, chest pain, um, we're part of a national audit of cardiac rehab um, and overall our uptake nationally is very poor. It is improving, um, but it's 47% actually. So we are trying to find different ways, which I'll go into earlier, uh, later even, um, <laughs> to how we're trying to improve that all the time. Um, one of the ways um, the British Association of Cardiac Prevention and Rehabilitation um, is trying to sort of like do an accreditation and certification program so that we're trying to standardise how we deliver cardiac rehab nationally because programmes will vary and just speaking to people already this morning there is a vast difference on how we you know, deliver our programmes so it would be good to sort of standardise that so we can improve on it. So yes, I've been asked to talk a little bit briefly um, about cardiac rehab and... Um, and what we do. So we have different stages. So basically we, we get the referral into the office and we go and see people on the wards or in clinics. Um, once we've got the referral, we go and see people, review their diagnosis and go through what's happened to them. And it's at that time we give some written information. We do like a telephone follow up after discharge, give people an advice telephone number which is forever really um, and then invite you in to an education program an individual assessment that's the key bit really because that's often where we can sit down with yourselves your families carers and really devise a program that's suitable for you there's different rehab programs available once you've completed your program we review you again and refer on to other exercise programs or other health professionals in the future and it says you're discharged you are but there's always the link in to speak to us for advice and support so some of the benefits I've mentioned before with the future uh, reducing the chance of cardiac events mortality reducing admissions but more importantly really it's um, providing a safe environment for people to come and exercise and really just to help people get back to their usual um, activity. Understanding medications, we know as mentioned already that um, the prevalence of anxiety and depression is high, specifically after a sudden event. Um, so it's people that go through rehab, they have been proven to reduce their anxiety and depression levels. And importantly, improving everyone's general overall quality of life. But yes, it is about increasing someone's confidence, which is more prevalent to this group of people, really, and helping you get back to your normal, healthy lifestyle. So I can only talk from my point of view what we do in Leicester. Um, so within Leicester, we have the traditional exercise, hospital exercise-based um, rehab program. Some of you might have been to these already. Um, so we're based in all three hospitals, the Leicester General, the Royal Infirmary and the Glenfield Hospital and also at the National Centre of Sports and Exercise Medicine and that's at Loughborough University. Um, our programmes are once a week for six or eight weeks but can be adapted for individuals. For those people that um, like the group exercise but are quite fitter, they're coping with um, their event that they've been through, we can refer directly out to city and county exercise schemes and that's with an exercise instructor, one that's got a knowledge base around cardiac disease. Um, so it's not just to any instructor, it's to specific instructors. And then 
In Leicester, we've also got a web-based cardiac rehab programme called Activate Your Heart. Now, that was launched in November 2012, although we've been working on it for many years. And this is, again, trying to improve the uptake. We recognise that people are younger, they want to get back to work a lot quicker, they don't really want to be in a, with a group of people who might be older. Um, so it's a cardiac rehab programme that's online, individually tailored to meet your needs. You can look at the information that's relevant to you, there's different stages, each stage has got a little bit more information, there's blogs, forums and access to people like myself who can find out information if we're not sure. So it's just another way of accessing cardiac rehab. Now this is starting to be rolled out nationally, so two health boards in Scotland have taken this on, Leeds, Lincoln, and we're getting better at getting it to more places, shall we say. So, um, once you've done your rehab sessions, um, we have a, a review again with the individual where we can refer, for those that have been to a hospital-based programme, we can then refer out to community exercise because the benefits are there really to, for people um, who exercise on the longer term and that's what we try and promote. But it's also really touching base with people and making sure that we're looking at the whole of you. So it might be that some people do need some psychological support, so we can refer to clinical or health psychologists. Um, we can refer to stop smoking, alcohol liaison, whatever, you know, diabetes, whatever's relevant to you really. And there are support groups in Leicester. Um, and one here is called Take Heart that meet every month at the Glenfield Hospital. So it's just really signposting people to, to talk to each other because often it's okay for us as health professionals to do this, but actually it's really important that you speak to each other to, to share your journey really. So the next um, part briefly I'm going to talk about is exercise. Um, it's really encouraging people to move. We know that no matter what happens, um, moving and exercising regularly, you get the most benefit from. So why do we go on about it so much? Well, we know that it improves to lower your resting blood pressure and heart rate, and that mean can lead to less symptoms, lowering cholesterol levels, reducing weight, reducing stress, promotes a sense of well-being, improves, um, improves the control of uh, diabetes, which we're hearing much more about. The strength and resistance training um, helps to improve muscle strength and muscle mass. It helps to go back to your usual daily activities and preserves bone density. But overall, regular exercise reduces your risk of cardiac events. So we talk about the types of exercise. Well, aerobic, and the research, the evidence would say we need to ideally exercise for 30 minutes five times a week. And that aerobic, that's that getting a bit warm, sweaty, a bit breathless feeling. Um, so things like walking, cycling, dancing, swimming, exercise classes and, and the gym-based work, that's, that's what we mean by that, I'm sure you know. And then the strength and resistance training, the evidence is around two or three times a week, and that's your handheld weights and gym weight machines. And that's more about a low level um, weight. This is what we talk to people about individually, really. Um, but it's more about repetitions and it's slow and steady so you can build up your muscle mass gradually. But like anything, it's important to be safe. So there's just some sort of top tips we give people, really. Sorry, this is a bit smaller. Um, so it's always important, I'm going to talk about this anyway, to warm up and cool down before... Um, aerobics exercise and it's really to help prevent injury and muscle soreness because we don't want to put you off we want you to keep going with this exercise um, and it just gets your heart ready into that steady state so providing more extra oxygen pumping around the body but obviously if you get any sudden pain dizziness or extreme short of breath we, we need you to stop exercising and get advice Again, if you've got a virus or you're not unwell, you shouldn't really force yourself to do the exercise. Your body needs that energy, really, um, to take some time off and, and rest and get better. But then when you do feel better, it's always better to start small and build up steadily again to what you were doing before. And it's 
never ideal to drink after um, exercise after you've been drinking alcohol or just eating a heavy meal um, or in hot and cold weather. So we have sort of three important phases of exercise and I think it is just being sensible really isn't it you know when we warm up um, a good five ten minutes of that low intensity exercise is just getting the body ready to ask it what we want it to do really we want to put less stress on the heart and the muscles so we want your heart rate and blood pressure and your temperature to build up gradually the conditioning phase that's where the bit where we know the benefits are gained so again that's when you are feeling a bit warmer a bit sweaty and a bit short of breath but that's okay it's good not to be frightened of that and then more importantly that cool down period <coughs> if you suddenly stop exercising your blood pressure and heart rate can drop quickly so that's when people get funny symptoms dizziness help palpitations so to avoid that we just say take that five ten minutes after you higher effort or intensity of exercise and just cool down gradually so it's just good practice really so a lot of the questions we get from people is how do you know what's the right level for you you know how do you monitor yourself <laughs> Um, so this is just one of the tools we use within rehab, but it can be for, for anything really. So what I'm doing now um, in terms of effort or exertion is probably number seven, although because I'm standing in front of you, it might be a wee bit higher. <laughs> but, um, you know, maximum is the most you've ever done in your life is number 20. So to get that conditioning phase, that, that, that bit we know that makes the difference, is somewhere between... Um, light and somewhat hard so 11 to 14 so you know you're doing something you can feel it but you uh, you're able to carry on that that's the bit and you can take that to anything you know any activity or exertion really so we tend to get away from recording heart rates we might do that initially when we first meet people just to get a bit of a guide about how we're expecting you to work but and you know exercise but in the end we take all the equipment off because it's not about checking your pulses all the time it's about how you're feeling so that's why we uh, use this to help now some of you might look at this and say my goodness three to five minutes this is just a guide really to how to start because we recognize if you've not exercised for a while we don't want to put you off it's better to start small and gradually build up but for those of you who are quite fit anyway, before your event, you'll be starting a lot further down the chain, sort of 15, 20 minutes. Whatever's right for you, a small amount, gradually build up, listen to how you're feeling. Your body tells you what you can and can't do. And if we know that if you do a small amount and build that up, you'll cope with it a lot better, really. Um, it is just being sensible and... Um, Instead of doing loads and feeling absolutely exhausted and thinking, mm, I don't like that feeling, it's better to do small and build it up nicely. And that way you're just progressing. So very briefly, um, I've been asked to talk to you about goals and sort of life, making lifestyle changing uh, changes. It is about working together. It is about talking to each other, really. Um, and just remember that you're not alone and... Even us as health professionals, we do need to hear, you know, what you've been through and help us tailor the, the advice for you. You might need support in a group or individual. Um, and these are the sorts of things that we discuss when you come to an individual assessment within rehab, really. It always helps to understand how your body works when you're trying to change behaviour. Having realistic goals, so it's those bite-sized chunks, really, within your capabilities and not trying to achieve all, everything all in one go because you just end up feeling like you want to give it up. So just pick something. But no matter how you want something to happen or change, it won't do that just by thinking alone. So it is really taking... Um, you know, before positive changes can take place, it's about taking responsibility for your own position in life. And addressing the barriers that we have to change. And a lot of the examples we get through from people through rehab is time, really. I don't, it sounds great, but I don't really have the time for that. Um, but it's just sort of making time and sitting down. It might be that you keep a diary of what's been happening, about your feelings, about the things that you want to change. I know that I've write down what I'm eating when I'm motivated to lose weight, you know, because that helps me. Um, but, yeah, um, 
it's really thinking about your lifestyle, what you want to change to make you have a healthier lifestyle in the future, writing them down, a lot of the things, what's important to you. It's all right for us as health professionals to go, we think you should do this. That doesn't work, actually. It has to come from you. You know, what do you want to change? And rating it out of an importance. So not being not important, 10 being extremely. And it's just actually really useful to write them down and put how important it is for you to change that particular goal. How confident do you feel about making those changes? Because that's then when you realise that you might need to ask for some help um, from family, it could be from professionals, it could be from each other really, about how you're going to make those changes. So really, um, reading round uh, before I came today, it is more education needed for people like myself really, so that we can help um, develop how we want to uh, our, our rehab programs because clearly the feedback that we're getting is that we're not getting it quite right um, and not, that is upsetting for us we want to improve on that so that we can help people individually and then promotion for people like yourselves to cardiac rehab teams um, and looking at individualized care perhaps you know like a web-based sort of self-management um, streams so that you get the most out of it but that was just a brief overview of what we do so yeah thank you for listening <laughs>